Hey there everybody, I'm just moving into the final pieces for fitting. These are the sort of interior walls, the tops of sliding panels for doors to form the sliders. These are the last things that you fit and you fit after painting everything else. And hence they're all cut out and they're ready to go but they're kind of a nuisance to paint. I'm choosing to paint these different colours so that different buildings have different panel colours and right now I am using like white tack in this case, but blue tack, white tack, whatever to stick it down onto a piece of cardboard and this is the best way to do it because the tack elevates the material just off the cardboard so that when you spray paint everything you don't end up with all your stuff sticking to the paper or trying to handle it to move it off of paper that you're doing then scanning thumbprints or smear marks or it, it facilitates the best kind of way of doing this when you're using tack like this, always cut it with scissors. Now, this may seem daft, but when you start using tack like this, it's like it's all fine. But after you've been using tack like this for like half an hour, an hour, it can really start tearing the tips of your fingers to pieces. Um, you'd be surprised at how much it can do that. You need two blobs for each bit. Yeah, the other thing is, make sure that um, I mean as I'm going now I'm trying to remove the worst of these marks because uh, spray paint isn't always 100% opaque and well it doesn't matter but it does matter <laughs> and just putting a blob on either end uh, I have been finding with sort of the plastic card some of this is plastic card some of this is foam uh, the power light uh, plastic card is just stuff I've got lying around hasn't cost me anything. If you buy plastic card, it's dirt cheap though, or um, styrene foam, I think it's called in the US. Uh, it's high density styrene, which forms plastic. And you just want to stick it down, it doesn't have to be too hard. The other thing that you've got to be really careful about is that in setting up all of these pieces, make sure that you understand exactly what piece is what. Uh, the, the worst thing that can possibly happen is you paint everything and then you, you don't know which doors are which and then you're faffing around with everything trying to work out which bits weren't meant to go where. So in the case of this, uh, my interior double doors, these are the panels that go up above those for the sliders for those doors. Uh, those doors are actually over in my pile of doors and the stuff over there. And these are the flat doors. This is the upstairs um, door out onto the roof, uh, including the panel which made the top slide. So just keep everything grouped together. Make sure that you know what's where when you're doing this. And that keeps everything nice and together. And as long as you know what you're doing, that's all that really matters. Um, you could become super, super militant and organized about this and say there is only one way to do it, but there's not, there's just whatever suits. Strongly recommend doing this. Um, at this point, where you're actually just doing it for the marking everything up and laying it out, it's kind of a nuisance. Another thing to bear in mind is spacing. Uh, you need to leave enough space in between your pieces so that you can actually spray the edges otherwise you'll end up just covering the front and not actually um, successfully painting the entire piece. Which it, well, it can be problematic. And also when you are spraying do not be scared to Um, sorry, I like all my door handles to be facing the same way. Also, I should be checking the backs of all of these. I don't want that. These lines. I just noticed that I was painting some up um, pieces and uh, the lines come through, which is really irritating. Although I haven't seen them dry yet, and it might be that the paint dried opaque. It might be that I was using yellow paint. But um, we shall see. We shall see. Sorry, yeah, this is actually my second batch. I've done them in two batches. I've done my first two colours, so they're on painted and drying. So I just wanted to get through them as quickly as I could. And I'm making this video now. 
so then while these are drying I could be fitting them and making the rest of the subs in the air. It, it's a um, very cyclic process in order to keep on top of videos I have to not only plan how I'm going to do this but plan the order in which it's going. So I'm just going to carry on with this, I'm going to get it all done and then once I've got all this laid up I will just show you how I'm choosing to lay this up so that I can keep track of stuff and I understand what's going on. So I'll catch you in a moment. Here's my board laid up. I don't think you can quite see everything, but just down here, this is like the front entrance. This is the entrance out from the stairwell onto the rooftop. These are my six doors, which are uh, sort of interior double doors, which go with these. Uh, these doors are the doors from inside the flats, uh, which are the dividing doors from the rooms in the flats. They're the slider uh, covers for these doors. Over here, we've got all the walls for the sort of the in between the balcony and the flat and then these are the doors that go with these walls uh, it's just laid up so that everything's together and I can easily even if I can't remember exactly I can easily discern like I put the the floor that's higher up is above the door that's on the ground floor just things like that are useful to when you're laying up a board like this for spraying just so that you, for your own reference everything's grouped together everything's neat so I'm going to get all this painted up and I will be back shortly. Well, I'll give you a brief show of some of the process as well. So just back outside at the spray booth. Um, I'm just weighing it down. So it's ever so slightly breezy today. And also I have my drying rack set up over here. So these are like a couple of pieces I've already sprayed up. Uh, just want to make a note when you're spraying these things. You want to spray at an angle so that you're catching all the edges so that when you are covering you're just getting the coverage from and yeah it's a bit speckly at the moment but as you start rotating and going round it will get less speckly. This just clips in these edges okay so I'll be back to you in a moment so these ones I've already finished spraying um, when you are spraying take into account that once you sprayed one side you do have to remove them and flip them and then you can spray the other side um, carefully removing tack uh, you can see there's just the old place. I think that's going to be inevitable. Uh, you can just touch that with a paintbrush with a with the same or similar colour. Yeah, and there's your doors ready to go pretty much. So I've got a couple of final details to do on these. I'm just going to peel all of these components off. But yeah, when you're painting them, you have to remove them and stick them back down. That is a little bit annoying, but that's life. So yeah, I'm just going to remove all of these and then I will show you final details for these. And then they'll be ready to fit, and the fitting of these will be the final job. So I'll catch you in a moment. Into the final stages of painting, then, and I'm just taking a black ink. Yep, I use inks a lot. Um, this is just two details I want to put in. I want to ink this central blob uh, in part because I want to create tonal variation, and in part because. I want uh, almost like a you know like a flat um, sort of a black screen where you have a, it's like a it's not an LED screen really but I want that kind of screen like quality there and I'm just dropping black ink into the door handle uh, just to highlight the recess and that's it that's my two details um, if you're feeling really fancy you might want to do some like luminescent blue get some bright blue and do like a handprint type motif on these but um, for the moment I'm happy just to do that uh, this takes an awful lot of time because it's a lot of repetitive quick actions which individually don't take very long but on mass like this Taking account there's 
what, there's six of these doors for each flat, so I'll do 12 just of these doors, like this. And then there's two sides, so uh, 6, 12, no, it's 24, 48, you know, I have to do this 48 times. And all it really is, is because if you leave the doors just a flat plain colour, uh, notice I'm not, gonna, I'm not actually going to highlight these at all or anything like that. That's partly because if you look at these in real life you'll often see that the only thing that really gives them any differentiation is um, muck. And to be honest with you, if you want to put muck on your buildings, do it after you've fully assembled them. Uh, at some point I might... well, I've been thinking that I might keep two of these. I might even clean up two of these, like do some filling, sanding and then um, smooth them out and then repaint the exteriors so they're all sort of super smooth and then take a couple of them and weather them so you almost have like the the nice area and the uh, dodgy CD area so the thing about a process like this as well is you just gotta keep it going and Bosh through it. No hang about, there's no. Yeah, you can't expect uh, amazing, perfect results when you're doing this kind of on mass kind of process. Also, I'm at a point where I'm kind of. Uh, it's not just that I, it's not, I don't just want to get them done. I want them done well. But on the same note, I uh, to do these perfectly, like I said, I think you'd have to spend two weeks on each building um, in order to do all the filling, have everything lined up properly. If you're doing it by hand, anyway. Uh, if I had uh, laser cut everything and I had lined up all the sort of um, I'd had all the sort of holes etched for where I want things to go so that it was a case of slotting stuff into pre-etched holes so everything was spaced perfectly because it was all well, it was all done with the street then yeah easy peasy so yeah and I'm going to call it here because this is just going to take time to dry and then these components after this We'll all be ready to go. So cheers everybody. Hope it was some use to you. Take care and have a good one. Bye bye.